Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Maria Alba is one lady whose contribution to pre-code Hollywood productions may be silent but salient. She was beautiful, charming, and not easily panicked, with breezy air of glamour and those Hispanic looks that could make almost any man stoop to conquer, borrowing the words of the famous Oliver Goldsmith. From the shores of Spanish soil, this beautiful goddess thrilled the American Golden Age cinema audience with her talent. Fortunately, history will not forget talents that impacted humanity like this actress, the reason we think that her name is worthy of our mention this season. How Maria Alba's funny English took Hollywood by storm! I want you to know, my viewers, how much I appreciate you. Without your support, these videos wouldn't be possible. Thank you for those who hit the thanks button. If there is any reason why you may not have heard or read much about a nature-made beauty like Maria Alba, it may just be because of her simple nature as a reserved icon, though with an undeniable physical and screen attraction. Historically, there is no better, energetic, gifted, famous and glamorous. Maria del Pilar Margarita Casuana Martinez anywhere in the world than a sultry lady whose nativity occurred on the 28th of December 1905. Although some sources have written that it was in 1910, based on what we know and have heard about young talents and their Hollywood date of birth scandals, it may not be out of place to say that a similar thing may have occurred also. Alba's historic birth was recorded in a small town in Barcelona, a city structured on the northeastern Mediterranean coast of the Spanish mainland in the Catalonia region of Spain, a very quiet, respectful and visionary young lady born with a passion for greatness. Her accompanying beauty no doubt took her to places, touring coast to coast until her talent ended up in Hollywood. Her dreams, talent and visions for humanity were so huge that they could not have been better showcased if she had remained in the Spanish province, as was seen in the later years of her life. Known professionally as Maria Alba, this Spanish-American movie genius wrote her name in the good book of time with her intelligence and under the legendary movies that have her imprint, she would remain an inspirational figure for generations to come. She was also a lucky personality, almost destined for what she later became in life, especially as we take a cursory look at how she made a swift shift from her homeland to Hollywood for what many would describe as a move for greener pasture. A lot of things remain sketchy about her childhood information, probably because of data storage and retrieval-related difficulties of typical early 19th century heydays. I learned that when Alba came to the United States, she was hired by the Fox Film Corporation because she had earlier won the Fox Film competition that took place in Spain. Records show that Maria Alba had arrived U.S. coast on the 26th of April 1927 via a second cabin-rate traveller on the SS Safern. The ship sailed through the port of Le Havre to France and later anchored at the port of New York. Then she was about 22 years of age, youthful, polite and stunningly attractive. She was instantly drafted in for action because she did not come for a tea party. I would say she came prepared because she had what most Hollywood directors wanted in movies. Her seductive eyes, the curvature, the height and the light skin tone, plus her amazing oval face that was perpetually shaded by her brunette hair curls. All of these add together to give her the screen elegance that she enjoyed all through her career. Although she came prepared, she may have taken some months to undergo studio language lessons, especially with the fading of silent movies and the inevitable shift to sound production. I'm also not sure if she knows as much as she was supposed to about the English language at the time she came in because of her deep Spanish background. She started learning the English language with immediate alacrity, but it seemed she made very little progress in some aspects of her English speaking, prompting slight criticism from her handlers and her rivals. More so when the likes of Lupe Velez or Dolores del Rio and other Latin American actresses did pass their language test and already worked in films. Even when she finally made major improvement, Maria Alba still spoke the English language with a thick accent that set her apart on set and obviously limited her chances of being cast in movies. Nevertheless, her beauty was a strong selling point that the studio was willing to exploit. She was at the time billed as Maria Casuana, 
when she started appearing in movies. At least she made her Hollywood movie debut with the name in that 1928 Roadhouse and continued with it, appearing in several feature films. Between her first appearance in 1928 and 1946, when she made her final outing in movies, Alba left a strong impression of her talent. She soon changed her name to Maria Alba. It does appear as if the name change occurred in between her active days with the studio. I still need to check the record so I don't mislead on that. But she had appeared in 25 pictures before I heard of the official change of her stage name. The last time I checked, La Morena de Mi Coppola was produced in 1946. That was the year she dropped her baton from the film industry that she came to service. Alba was a great beauty that anyone can break the bank for, and fans will always remember her remarkable role as Saturday in that epic 1932 Douglas Fairbanks film, Mr. Robinson Crusoe, which fortunately is today one of her most notable outings in the industry. That movie was great as a historic adventure, but I will bet my dollar that it is not everybody that appreciates it. But in almost all the reviews I have seen, critics talked more about the native girl in the movie with her sultry look, obviously referring to Maria Alba. One critic who did not quite appreciate something about the movie, but was quick to talk about the young beauty in the movie, said that the story is pathetic. It began with a stupid bet by a brainless rich man. What a way to bash a man! And add that the only mildly interesting thing about the movie is the many pieces of equipment on the island. Oh yeah, the native girl is kind of cute, so I love the cute native girl, the statement read. I guess not much is known about Maria Alba in the public domain, but almost everyone who remembered her face in the Golden Age movies will always link her with that Mr. Robinson Crusoe. The 76 Minutes movie was directed by A. Edward Sutherland and produced by Douglas Fairbanks, the man that had a lot in mind when he created such a contemporary comedy romance that bubbled with laughter and actions. Douglas Fairbanks was also cast in that movie, appearing as Steve Drexel alongside William Farnham, Earl Brown and Maria Alba. A quick rundown of the concept will suffice. Viewers saw Steve Drexel willingly strands himself on an isolated island because of a stake he was hoping to win. He plans to redesign civilization and style a small city of 52 Boulevard and Park Avenue out of the wilderness. Drexel is assisted by his dog plus a native monkey. There is also a wild goat that he seized with one of his traps in the jungle. He also needed to have a human assistant, so he tried to nurture a native as his man Friday in line with the original Robinson Crusoe story. But he fails because the native ran away. What really motivated Steve Drexel to embark on that espionage in the jungle? He was with his pals on a vessel within the vicinity. As soon as they sail beyond a hot island, Steve stakes that he can go there and survive without any form of supplies. He took the bold step while the rest continued their journey. Now on the island, viewers watch Steve do anything he can to survive the jungle in the best possible way. Critics say the production was a troubled production that saw many of the sound equipment malfunctioned and the crew had no other option than to go back and dub a few of the scenes in California. They said it made the movie appear somewhat cheap even as some of the images were soundless as if the shots were taken without any sound. Although all that did not affect Alba, the native girl identified as Saturday because her beauty was something pleasurable, a sight to behold. Alba was also seen showcasing her glamour when she appeared as the colourful Princess Naji in the Bella Lugosa series The Return of Chandu, in what critics say was a moment of historic magic. This production is also unique in Alba's career. The series is a 1934 American 12-episode fantasy movie that was an adaptation of a serialised radio programme known as Chandu the Magician, produced by Sol Lesser and directed by Ray Taylor. This remarkable production saw Bella Lugosa appearing as Frank Chandler, Chandu the Magician. Of course, he starred alongside Maria Alba as Princess Naji, Clara Kimball Young as Dorothy Regent, and Dean Benton as Bob Regent, among others. Originally released to be shown in theatres either as a normal series of 12 weekly parts of equal duration, or a 60-minute feature movie that is made up of the initial four episodes with subsequent parts, appearing in a weekly serial plan. 
There was also an option of a standalone feature of the first four that will not end with a cliffhanger. Very laudable production arrangement, I must say. Interestingly, that production with Chandu on the Magic Island would be among the very few times Lugosi took the hero part as against his usual antagonistic typecast. I love the movie so much, maybe I should refresh your mind about the great cult classic, because I also enjoy historic magic. The black magic cult of Ubasti, which operated on the desert island of Lumaria, thinks that the princess Naji Alba of Egypt is a recreation of their ancestral goddess Asana. And what is next? They must use her as a sacrifice to enable the great Asana to come back to life. The highly exotic Naji would seek asylum in the California home of Frank Chandler, a boisterous American with white magical powers, who parades himself as Chandu. It seems everyone wants to protect this beautiful princess, Chandu, and the California high priest known as Vindahayan is in a race to safeguard her from the ensuing dark forces. But when Vindahayan put her in a condition that apparently restricts Chandu's access to her, it becomes a funny scene, as he moves her remains to a safer location, the port of Suva in the South Seas, and the story continues. The truth is that the movie is quite spectacular with thrilling moments. You just wish the princess is safe as the audience is thrilled by this amazing adventure that was dubbed by the filmmaker as the greatest mystery drama. It is not very clear why Alba decided to change her name after she left the entertainment scene or the factors that made her fizzle out in such an early retirement. A school of thought, though, did suggest that she wanted to Americanize her name to suit her newfound home in America or that she wanted to disconnect entirely from her past. What about her private life? There were reports that at the time she was participating in The Return of Chandu in 1934. Some of the information put out as part of promotional information hinted at Maria Alba's marriage. Sources say she was often referred to then as Mrs. David Todd. Data available indicates that the duo was married in 1931. The union lasted for about six years before it became rocky, leading to a divorce in 1937. The marriage may have been a childless one, as there was no record of any. However, on the 9th of July 1950, she met and married Richard J. Burke. The union produced three kids, which are her only children. The two remained in marriage until the ugly hands of death struck in 1996 and took away her heartthrob and caring husband. Following Richard's departure to eternal glory, Alba was left with his three children to take care of. Beautiful production, titled El Codigo Penal and Kiss of Araby, is among the many films that Alba played a role in with her short career in the movie industry. The Kiss of Araby in particular is another exciting movie that makes up Maria Alba's interesting contributions to the American movie scene. That movie saw Maria Alba appearing as Dolores Mendez alongside Walter Byron as Lieutenant W.B. Lawrence and Claire Windsor and Mrs. Courtney, among others. The filmmaker portrays an imaginary story of the commander of the British Army in Arabia. Major J.W. Courtney doing his stint in the desert and trying to curtail the prowling tribesmen while his beloved wife is hitting it off in an extramarital affair with his junior officer. On his unplanned return, Courtney's wife would seek refuge inside Lieutenant W.B. Lawrence's quarters. One thing leads to another. Lawrence loses his position in the force, so he finds solace in El Rahman's forces and becomes a sheik of the jungle. The feud caused by Captain Randall ensured between the army and the tribesmen, and the end did not just justify the means, but saw a remarkable twist. We saw the fatally injured Randall shock the force with a confession of all his evil deeds, including the shocking bedding and making love with his superior's wife. This epic production was first accepted for broadcast in Cincinnati on the 22nd of November 1949 on WCPO Channel 7. Maria was also a good dancer and probably one of the talents that endeared her to people. She was said to have performed beautifully in Special Concert Week, which took place at the Paper Mill Playhouse in Milburn, New Jersey, singing and dancing alongside such names as Buffy St. Marie, Carlos Montoya and the Serendipity Singers. Maria Alba died on the 26th of October 1999, when she turned 93 in San Diego, California, possibly 
from Alzheimer's disease. Climbing up on Hollywood's success ladder is a very difficult task. Robert Conrad, from famous stunts to controversy and street fighting. Let's see his story here. <laughs> 